So there are always new and exciting things happening at the Greensboro Science Center. And the latest project is under construction now. Ron Settle is the curator of programs here at the Greensboro Science Center. What's happening? What's going on? Well, you know, the zoo had kind of a renaissance a few years ago. Wonderful thing. A little over a year ago, the aquarium opened here. Right. It's the museum's turn now. So um, the landscape here in the museum that uh, has been more or less unchanged for a while is going to Go, undergo a radical uh, uh, reinvention. We're going to entirely reimagine the way we uh, do the museum here. And it begins with, um, with Cy Play Bay, our young kids area. But to show people what we have in mind, since the areas aren't constructed yet, we wanted to do something different, novel, kind of out of the box. So we have a board game here, and we're going to walk around the board through augmented reality technology and uh, move through spaces that haven't been built yet. Let's do it. Well, this is our augmented reality game board. We call it the out-of-the-box game because that's how we do our best thinking here at the Greensboro Science Center. Uh, so uh, by training the iPad on each of the areas of the game board, we can move through them. Let's start here with the first area that's going to be renovated, Cy Play Bay, our young kids area. Now you can see popping up from the game board is an undersea exploration and adventure area. And you can also see as I move the board, it's attached, it's affixed right on it. It isn't physically there, but it is uh, virtually and digitally overlaid on it. So in Cy Play Bay, we're going to give kids an opportunity to explore the environment of an undersea coral reef. We'll be using lighting effects and soundscapes all around them and uh, projections on the walls and the ceiling so they'll be surrounded by the sights and sounds of a coral reef environment. They'll be able to look overhead and see wave patterns moving across the ceiling area above them. They'll even see boats and fish moving overhead to give them the sense of being submerged underwater there. Now for a long time, a centerpiece of our small kids area has been a ship that kids could play on. Since it's going to be an undersea environment, we're going to sink that ship, and the S's curiosity is going to become a sunken ship environment for them to go through and explore. There'll be all sorts of nooks and crannies and areas that they can look into with surprises everywhere they turn. And one of the big surprises is going to be on the back side of the ship, so let's uh, virtually go there. On the back side of the ship is a colorful and inviting friendly octopus. Her name is Octavia because she's a musical octopus. You can see that she's holding her hand some drumsticks poised before an array of drum heads. And in the tentacles on the other side, she's got um, a harp. So what kids will be able to do is, uh, is touch bang or <laughs> otherwise interact with these drum heads and they'll be connected to a device that will then trigger um, different sounds of the sea. One dread drum head might be whale songs, another might be dolphin calls, another might be the sound of underwater volcanic activity. Anything you might find acoustically underwater there, they'll be able to trigger off those drum heads. And then with the, um, with the harp, it'll be connected to a theremin device so that as they move their hands up and down the strings, they'll be activating sounds of the sea and can change the pitch of them up and down through that kind of interaction, touching the harp strings. It's going to be a great thing. I think Octavia is going to be just a real hit. Um, let's look a little bit farther above our heads there in Cyplay Bay. And there's a submarine now that's landed on the floor of the ocean. There'll be a submarine climber there. The kids will be able to go into it. As a matter of fact, let's uh, open it up now and let you see all kinds of knobs and valves and buttons and dials that they can interact with. And while they're doing that, making all these manipulations inside the sub, the effect will be all around them because as they look out the front viewport, is a couple of happy kids are right there. They're going to be seeing lights and projection patterns all around the sub that they're activating by touching all the manipulatives inside. So it's going to be a, a full interactive experience inside the sub and outside. Now one of my favorite features of Cy Play Bay is going to be something that heretofore you would have had to go to Disney World to experience. Um, a lot of people may be familiar with Crush the turtle from uh, Finding Nemo. At Disney World, you can go to a show where you interact 
with the animated character in real time. It's called live performance animation. We're going to have something very similar here at the Science Center. We'll have our own undersea creature, maybe some undersea explorers uh, um, that are getting in the submarine and in exploring the uh, reef environment. But those animated characters are going to talk in real time to the audience of kids surrounding them. The way we're going to do that, we'll put up on the virtual walls around in the space here. You can see on these walls on either side of the screen, we're showing examples of the actual sorts of software that we'll be using. You can see here there are actors being watched closely by a computer. And as the computer watches them, it can translate every nuance of their performance into the live animated character. Um, everything she does, the uh, red panda does. Everything he does, the human uh, figure does. So we'll have a computer trained in the background on an actor who will then have that performance translated live to the animated character. What a fun job. Uh, I, you know, especially for somebody who, as I expect, they will have experience in improvisational theater. Mm -hmm. To have an audience of kids and you're able to watch them and all they can see is your, um, your avatar, your animated character, and to say, hey, you in the red hat, what's your name? Uh -huh. You having a good time here today? What's your favorite thing that you've done here today? That kind of live interaction. It's, it's really going to be spectacular. And as I say, there's nothing like it around here. Um, we'll be the first in the area to have it. Now, Sign Play Bay is not only an undersea area to explore, it's uh, also got a surface side, a beach side. Makes you want to be there right now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Where the kids can emerge from the underwater side through um, a sand castle, Fort Sandcastle, there uh, on the beach. Um, they can uh, come through a passageway, or they can come through a slide uh, and slide right down onto the beach. It's going to be great. So one of the highlights of this beach side uh, are the kites. Now, flying a kite at the beach is a fun thing, so kids are going to be able to do it here. I'll touch that kite. And we can bring up, get a little bit better view of it. On the back wall, you can see kids who are stuffing pieces of fabric, they're the kites, into pneumatic tubes that take them and uh, transport them up through the tubes, along the ceiling, out over the top, and they can catch them as they come down. Ours is even going to be more complex than that. It'll actually extend to not only up the wall of the space, but uh, across the rafters overhead in the ceiling. So uh, what kid wouldn't want to do that? I would like to do that myself. Well, from Sign Play Bay, let's move on to an area that we'll be reimagining after that. Our dinosaur gallery is going to become prehistoric passages realm of dragons. Slip this back up to get a little bit better view. You'll enter Realm of Dragons through a wormhole, a portal through time. Uh, so just imagine as you approach the space, you're going to see an actual wormhole. This is going to be a, um, a fog projection screen. Tiny droplets of water, so small, they'll feel dry to the touch as you move through them. But they make a projection surface, and so we can have the wormhole inviting you to pass through it, beyond which you'll be able to see signs of the Cretaceous period. So having entered through there, what we want people to understand is we are bringing dinosaurs to Greensboro as we've never done before. So to make that point here on the augmented reality game board, uh, we actually have some dinosaurs moving through Center City Park in downtown Greensboro. Uh, if you're ever down by the fountains downtown there and see a Triceratops being chased by a T-Rex, run. It really, Indiana Bones himself would recommend that you do that. There you go. So bringing dinosaurs to Greensboro as we've never done before involves what? Well, one thing it's going to use is augmented reality technology like you're seeing here with the iPad and our game board. So imagine you're looking at all of the physically present elements there in the exhibit, but you want to know more. You can take your own smartphone, Android, iPhone, whatever you have, uh, aim it at an exhibit and Augmented reality, digital overlays will pop up and appear to occupy the space right in front of you. So your smartphone will become a kind of magic window giving you extra information and experiences right there in the exhibit.
Now, what if you don't have a smartphone with you and want to be wowed by some wonderful things there? Well, we're going to have fossil cases like nobody else around. Here's an example I'm bringing up here. Everybody's got fossil cases. But these are going to be not glass boxes, but glass pyramids inside which will not just be a static item, static fossil, but surrounding it three-dimensionally will be any kind, of, uh, any kind of teaching tool we want to put in there. We can have the moving three-dimensional dinosaur in miniature that the fossil represents. We can put a miniaturized paleontologist right inside the case who can walk around the object and tell you all about it. As a matter of fact, if you look at the back wall here, and I'll change the pitch of the iPad a little bit, you can see actual video on the back wall of people that have an augmented reality, uh, or uh, Pepper's Ghost case is what it's called, right there in front of them. So they're not having to look through any medium, no screen to view this. When they look into the case itself, it's filled with, um, with animations or people or animals, whatever we choose to put in there. It'll be a kind of Star Wars experience so that for all intents and purposes, what you'll be looking at is a 3D hologram telling you about the fossil that you're looking at. Talk about taking paleontology into the 21st century. They'll do it. Uh, then, since we want people to understand that reptiles weren't the only big animals during the days of the dinosaur, uh, we're going to have not a butterfly garden, but a dragonfly garden. We'll have robotic dragonflies that will be moving around, flying in a designated area of the exhibit. If I turn the game board here, you can see on the back wall, that's actual video of a dragonfly robot with a two-and-a-half-foot wingspan, and we'll be doing demonstration flights from time to time right there in prehistoric passages of the realm of dragons. As though that weren't enough, we're also going to have contemporary dragons, Komodo dragons, right there in the exhibit. One way that paleontologists learn about life in the past is comparing ancient fossils to modern living species. And um, the studies of the motion and structure of the body of a Komodo dragon in comparison to the prehistoric dragons of past help inform paleontologists about what their lives may have been. So if that's prehistoric passages, realm of dragons, it's going to be just, just a completely reimagined, reinvented space. The final area that I want to show you, and I'm going to pitch the um, iPad back up again, is the entire downstairs of the museum. It's going to be transformed into what we call Wonder World, W-U-N-D-E-R World. Uh, it'll be filled with the sights and sounds of uh, caverns and volcanoes and underground geological activities and with animals that live underground. It'll be introduced by a visit to the office of our resident explorer, Indiana Bones, so that visiting the office of Dr. Bones, you'll be able to um, see projections on every surface there. Crates will appear to open up as you look through the windows of Dr. Bones' office, and you can peer inside and see what he's got packed into the crates. Objects on the desk will come alive, move across the desk, and start telling you stories about what's there pictures on the walls, items on the shelves, all of these through a technology called projection mapping will morph and change the office as people stand there and look at it and uh, tell the stories of each of the areas that are there. So I see that there has uh, been some activity there, some volcanic activity. It's opened up for us to see. And I think if we look inside there, oh yeah, there he is. Indiana Bones himself is making his way down a lava tube to explore it. He's very brave, not always Very think, handsome. Not, well, I, I think so. Not always thinking about his own safety. But the kids will follow Dr. Bones through subterranean caverns and explore all kinds of geological processes there. We'll even have an area where Kids and their families can stand, choose a location in the world where they want to explore a cavern, and then by touching a, an iPad, have the entire wall surrounding them in panorama become that cavern um, so that it'll be 
uh, a virtual travel to an environment somewhere far flung in the world. Uh, and then, of course, what would it be without exploring the annals of the subterranean world? Spiders, snakes, scorpions, um, they're all going to be on hand there. Um, as people are looking at these kinds of animals, they'll be passing over a bridge, and as they walk over the bridge, looking at the rock work within which the animal enclosures are going to be nestled, they'll look down and underneath the bridge, slithering snakes and scuttling scorpions. Uh, it's going to be an adventure. So we are just really excited about all the possibilities for Wonder World. There's uh, a little bit of volcanic activity that's welled up right there for you to see. Um, so all of these technologies are going to be used to tell interesting science stories. Augmented reality like this, the Pepper's ghost technology that lets uh, fossils come alive inside their cases, projection mapping that'll let the office of Dr. Bones tell its own stories. Um, it, it's going to be something unlike anything you've seen around here. As you can see, there are going to be all kinds of technologies in use that uh, no one has ever seen around here before, interpreting these interesting stories of science for our visitors. So um, the interior of the museum is going to become as cutting edge as the rest of the complex here at the Science Center has become. And so now everybody wants to know when. When are they going to see these fun and exciting new things? Well, actually, beginning December 5th, we're going to close down our present Kids Alley, Young Kids Play Space. Uh, we will have a relocated temporary exploration area for kids in our large exhibit hall that we're calling our Big Backyard that they could explore. But come next June, we're going to be opening the first part of this museum transformation with the Cyplay Bay area that you saw. Uh, then keep watching in the months ahead, we'll start construction on prehistoric passages and then on the downstairs renovation with uh, Wonder World. Uh, so uh, you've seen nothing like it before. We've seen nothing like it before, yeah. except in our imaginations and on the augmented reality game board. But before you know it, it's gonna be right in front of us and we just cannot wait. And do you think we might see Indiana Bones climbing around in uh, Cyplay Bay and uh, swinging and going under the- I have no doubt. And, Sandcastles. And well, you know, Indiana Bones being an adventure, he's gotta be one of the first ones going down that slide into the beach side of Cyplay Bay. But particularly when you get to the uh, prehistoric passages of Realm of Dragons, Dr. Bones and some of his paleontological explorer friends are going to be right on hand. We will be looking out for it. Meantime, of course, there is a whole lot to explore at the Greensboro Science Center right now every single day of the year. So don't wait. Make a visit today.